composting is a great way to turn your yard and garden debris into what we often call black gold. And that is the finished product compost that can be used in our lawns and our gardens. In building a compost pile, the number one and most important question is, well, what do we put into the compost pile? And the easiest way to remember is to think of the terms greens and browns. The greens provide the nitrogen and some of the moisture needed, and the browns then provide the carbon source that the microorganisms need to feed on and break down. When you're building a compost pile, don't think about what you're putting in there as being dead, but think about the compost pile itself as being alive full of all sorts of microorganisms, fungi, bacteria, earthworms, all these things that are just waiting to devour what you put into the compost pile. When it comes to greens, the most common sources we have are grass clippings fresh from the lawn or kitchen scraps, apple peel, celery, banana peels, whatever, all make great greens. Coffee grounds are also another great green. When it comes to the browns in our garden, well, the most common thing we have are gonna be our shredded leaves, dry grass clippings, and all the prunings from small branches. And it's this mix of greens and browns then that makes the compost pile. Normally we need two to three times the browns, the dries, as opposed to those with moisture. And what we wanna do is start by layering the browns, the greens, the browns, and the greens. The other key to success in building a compost pile is to make sure that there's plenty of moisture. So as I'm building this pile, I probably wanna have a hose or a sprinkler handy so I'm wetting down these leaves. Because a properly functioning compost pile should almost have the moisture of a wet sponge. One of the problems why compost piles don't work is it's too dry and the microorganisms can't feed. A lot of times homeowners don't have a lot of greens. They just have leaves, grass clippings that are dry. Garden fertilizer makes a great addition to the compost pile because that then can substitute for the nitrogen. One thing you don't want to compost is a lot of woody material because it just takes so long for that to break down. These are better chipped, shredded, used other places, or sent off for disposal. Another thing you don't want to put in your compost pile are going to be scraps from the kitchen table. If it has cholesterol, fat, oil on it, then that all goes into the trash. But if you're preparing your celery, your lettuce for a salad, chopping it up, all those waste goes into the compost bin. But once you put that salad dressing on it, it's no longer something suitable for backyard composting. Other things you want to avoid putting in the compost pile are mainly your pet waste, such as dog and cat. There are potential of some diseases that can be transmitted through those pet manures that we really don't want to put in our compost pile. Now, if you have source to sheep, chicken, beef, all the kind of farm animal compost waste, manure waste, then those can be added into the compost pile for greens. So in building a successful compost pile, it's all about the science. It's all about getting that right mix of browns and greens mixed into the bin, adding sufficient moisture to drive that, and then it's set back and wait. If you build the compost pile properly, in about two weeks, if you put your hand or a thermometer in it, it should be warm to the touch. That's telling you the compost pile is working. From there, it's just a matter of turning it, keeping it moist, and waiting for all your garden debris to be turned in to black gold for the garden. For more information, visit your local Extension office or visit our website at kansasgreenyards.org.